Hey, this is Troy from Playtime Engineering, and in this video today I wanted to show you a little bit about how we hooked up the blip boxes and this old Moog MG1 to the new Korg SQ64 sequencer. As you know, the blip boxes do have MIDI input, so you can use a variety of input sources, whether it be computers, keyboards, and even these fun new innovative hardware sequencers like this SQ64. So I did a video sort of doing a performance with this earlier, you can check that video out. Um, but here I want to show you just how we set it all up so we could get the blip boxes working with the SQ1. So let's, let me show you what we have going here. Um, we have basically uh, the original white blip blocks on channel A here. So we can uh, change the gates here to turn those on or off. Oh, looks like we have C there. Let's turn uh, all the, the white blip blocks gates off here. As we turn one or two on here, you can hear them make sounds. And we also have the uh, black blip blocks, which is set to MIDI channel three. Uh, the after dark is basically, you can control which MIDI channel uh, works with that. So we can uh, change all the gates here, or basically, tell the After Dark what notes to play. That's on um, pattern B here. Turn those all off. And we have the Moog MG1, uh, which I actually rebuilt uh, from scratch. That's a fun project I did. Uh, that's on uh, channel C. Uh, this is a synthesizer from the 80s that does not have MIDI, uh, but thankfully the SQ1 does have pitch and gate uh, control voltages. So uh, what really makes this device great is it can play old analog gear uh, using these CV and gate outputs. So I really don't use the MG1 very much because usually it's pretty complicated. I have to go from a computer to a MIDI interface to a, um, uh, to a MIDI to CV converter and that is, is sort of cumbersome, but thanks to the SQ64, I can go right with the uh, control voltage and gate right to the MG1. And finally, we have uh, channel D here, which is uh, made for the drums. We uh, have that controlling the after dark drums. Um, yeah, let's see if we can get that going here. Unmute those. So we have uh, basically on the first drum pad here, the kick. You can hear how we can turn, turn those kicks on and off. And on the other drum pad, we have a the snare. So we can control the snares that way. So when you first get the SQ64, I have to admit, it was a little intimidating for me. I'm not really used to hardware sequencers that much, uh, but it just took me an evening to really dive in and figure out. I'm gonna show you first how we got it all set up. So um, first with track B, we have with track A, we have to assign the MIDI channel to channel one. Uh, the original white blip blocks only responds to channel one for the synthesis. So we'll go into the global mode, uh, A selected here. And here we have uh, basically uh, on track A, um, we have MIDI on, and we can select which, which uh, uh, we wanna go to TX channel. We wanna select which TX channel we're sending the data from track A to. So we have it set to MIDI one. Uh, then we'll go on to track B, which is our after dark. The after dark is set to channel three. So here we have MIDI channel three uh, going to the MIDI out on channel three uh, on the TX. Uh, finally on uh, C here, this is going out to the Moog. So instead of sending MIDI, we have all these uh, S-Trig and uh, volts per octave. So this is set up specifically for the, uh, the Moog MG1. Uh, that this can change a little bit based on, you know, some older synthesizers have some different parameters here, but no worries, the SQ64 has you covered with all the options you need. Uh, finally, with the drum tracks, we go to uh, channel D here. We're gonna, I think, hold down channel D, go to uh, channel D, we're still in global, bring up our uh, pad one. So there's 16 drum pads here. So we have this going to channel one, uh, C sharp. 
uh, and basically on the after dark, every other key goes to either the kick or the snare. And then, so that's a C sharp. So we, for the next one, um, actually we want this on channel two. We actually want this on channel four. Let's see here. You go channel four actually. Um, And that's going to send out our uh, these two to basically channel four, C sharp, and uh, C, so we get the, the kick and the snares. So let's make sure this is all working here. Um, we're going to hold down the D here. We're going to go actually, so we're going to leave uh, the global mode and we're going to go to gate mode. Uh, gates basically tells you when the uh, when you trigger something. So that's really the most important part of this sequencer. Then we'll go to D here. Uh, we'll bring up basically our kick drum here. And we turn off all our kicks. Turn on a bunch of kicks. Then we can hold down D, go to our snare pad, turn off. We got a lot of snares going on here. Turn some of those off. And we can now do the same since we're set up. Now we're in the gate mode. We can go turn on some of our after dark. See the after dark triggering there. And we can also turn on some original. You can see the, the, the original light up there with the NS MIDI signal. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much all you have to do to get this set up. Um, the one other thing that uh, had me a little intimidated is basically uh, when you're dealing with synthesizers, you also have to set up the notes, uh, the pitch. So you go to the pitch here uh, and you hold down your uh, key that you want the, each step, what pitch they want to be in. Uh, I cheated here a little bit. This is a little trick I use. I basically set uh, all these to uh, sharps. Uh, so basically the black keys. So uh, I just sort of randomly assigned everything uh, from the Moog to the after dark you can see here the uh, the pitch here you can hold that down and change the pitch um, those are the sharps and you know when you're when you're dealing with music uh if you're playing all in the black keys they're much more forgiving as far as the tones being working out together so that's a little trick i did i just sort of randomly assigned these i i kind of tried to put some on some different octaves so um you know the uh I tried to get some octaves sort of going with that, uh, but that's really all there is to it. So uh, once you have your um, output assignment set, you set your MIDI channels, uh, you set any uh, gates for the three track, for the four tracks, and um, and you set some pitches, and that's that's all you need to do to start having some fun. Once you have it all set up, then you can start having a lot of the fun with some of these special features uh, inside the SQ64. You can do things like reverse the sequence. So uh, we listen on, on C here. We're going to reverse the uh, the Moog sound. Let's see what that does. We can also change the uh, the sequence length. So we can make this double time by going to 32 mode. Or we can slow it down, we'll go into 8th mode. We can do that the same with the other tracks at the same time here. We can just randomize things. We can do triplets. You can also instantly mute uh, your drum tracks here, I believe. So if we just want our snare, just some kick. I think you can do a swing on any track here, so we add a little swing to the bass. And 
Hey, you hear a little swing there? So that's pretty much it. Uh, I, if you want to play around with hardware sequencers, I, 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 I recommend it. Sometimes I get so locked in to trying to play a melody on a keyboard, and that's just the way I've always produced music. And, you know, playing in a melody with a keyboard. Uh, but with this, with the hardware sequencer, it's really kind of a whole new game. It's more about having fun and experimenting and just, just trying some different things. It's uh, an easy way to bring all of your equipment together. And let's say you have uh, some modern MIDI keyboards, maybe you have some old analog stuff like this Moog MG1 and even some blip boxes. Just throw it all into the mix. Uh, you see on the SQ SQ64, you have all these outputs. So just, just have fun with it. All right, thanks a lot for watching.